that might scare a few of you. Oh no, it's loud Finnish music. Get it away from me, you wusses. This is, of course, Blue Please here on WoW Radio. And at the looks of it, we've just passed 335 listeners, which is not too shabby. But you can do better. Get your friends, get your parents, get your pets. Yeah. Many pets that are capable of operating computers are tuning into shoutcast streams. Or alternatively, you can do the more sensible thing and tune in for them. Do it. You know you want to. Now, since we have uh, such a large amount of listeners, now will be the time to beg for money. As you may or may not be aware, we are going to BlizzCon. We will be broadcasting BlizzCon for all those who aren't going. Those unfortunate people. We're going, and as a website, we'll be testing our video streaming capability over the next week or so. And the website you want to be checking out for all the BlizzCon information and the WoW Radio stuff. WCRadio.com slash BlizzCon. Now, we have already bought out of our own money a high-spec video and audio streaming rig. We cannot afford anything else. And we need at least one good quality video camera and a couple of radio mics. So, we are asking for your help. If you think this station is worth a few of your hard-earned dollars, then head over to WCRadio.com and click the Donate button on the top of the screen. Alternatively, if you don't like simply giving your money away, then you could buy some of our things. We have a Wild Radio t-shirt, money of which, of course, will go directly to us. We also have the World of Warcraft Cafe Press Store. A small amount of each purchase also goes to Wild Radio. Blue Please, the album is being sold on there for a pathetically low $8.00. Or seven dollars ninety nine, if that makes any difference to you. Go there, buy some things, and we can afford to do a quality cast from BlizzCon and expand the station even further. Again, thanks for your support. Okay, back to what we were doing in the first place. Expansion rumors. Yes, yes, yes. However, I'm going to put that on hold for just a little bit and introduce one of the features for today. Now, as some of you may or not may or may not be aware, but let's get the listeners involved in certain sections of the show, and one of them is this. It's working, yeah, it's working, it's working as intended, baby. Yeah. So, the idea of working as intended is to get you lot, the listeners, to get your heads together and come up with something, something tangible, something that perhaps Blizzard hasn't thought of yet, and it tends to vary. We will either take a concept that is blatantly, obviously flawed and needs fixing, such as the Dishonor system, and see what you can make of that, or we'll take a more theoretical concept and see what you can come up with there. Now, this week it will be theoretical. I want to hear from you. I want to know about the future of instancing from you lot. Now, as we're well aware, Molten Core used to be the biggie, but now Blackwing Lair is, of course, the biggie. There will be a new instance down in Silithus, which will be then the biggie. One that's comparable, if not more difficult than Blackwing Lair. We're also getting these new 20-man dungeons. We've all already got Zul'Gurub, and we are getting yet another one down in Silithus, which will be a 20-man. Slightly tougher than Zul'Gurub, apparently, so... Can we keep going on like this? Can we simply keep adding new dungeons? 40-man, 60-man, 80-man dungeons. Can we keep doing it? And will you be happy with it? Or do you have some other ideas? Do you think that perhaps solo instancing might be a good idea? And if so, how would you implement it? What kind of things would you do to make it challenging and difficult enough to be worthwhile? So, if you have an answer to that question, your idea of the future of instancing, email themurloc at gmail.com. That is themurloc at gmail.com. And throughout the show, I'll be coming back to this and reading out those emails and seeing what you lot think of the ideas of your peers. So, anyway, back on the topic. Expansion rumours. Now, just to clarify what I said earlier, the Blood Elves are the High Elves. So, technically, the High Elves are still alive. However, the High Elves as a race are pretty much dead. They were slaughtered in Warcraft 3 by Athelus. Athelus? No. <laughs> Arthas. Athelus didn't kill anything. He's weak. He's terrible at Warcraft 3. You don't want to see him play. He's uh, one of the worst people I've ever seen. Anyway. Yes. So... The High Elves as a race are pretty much dead. You've got your occasional exile like the one in Menethil, I believe there's one of these in Plaguelands, there's one in Ratchet, but as a race they are pretty much dead. They were all slaughtered, attempting to defend the Sunwell from Arthas and his evil, evil deeds. So yes, not a playable race, and that's why I said they were dead. Just to clarify for those who were unclear on 
Warcraft lore. Okay, back to the so-called expansion leak, also known as a big fake. So there you go, I'll repost that in the chat room just for those who have lost it. So, new areas. Oh, now, this obviously is going to happen. And I would say these are one of the most accurate hoaxes and predictions in this particular document. Areas and territories, new areas, Dalaran, obvious, blindingly obvious. We all know that Dalaran is probably going to be coming back in the expansion. It would make sense because it's in this lovely little dome and it's, of course, a total waste of a concept to leave the mage city in this little dome and totally useless. So, what are they going to do with Dalaran? Is Dalaran going to be, bearing in mind it was a human city, an alliance only area. Is it perhaps going to be a different orientation? Maybe it's going to be neutral. Maybe it is going to be evil, perhaps. Maybe the people in Dalaran have become obsessed with their failure and maybe they wish to kick some ass in general in retribution for it. Quelthalas. If I'm not very much mistaken, Quell Thalas was the city that was completely and totally raised in Warcraft 3, which was the High Elf city. I may be wrong on this, my law law is not my strong point, but I seem to recall killing everyone in there and destroying the Sunwell. Of course, Quell Thalas could be coming back. Mount Heal. Now, those who've watched the exploration videos of people using WoW Explorer and uh, such things to go into the areas they're not supposed to, we all know that Mount Heal is an area that already exists and is probably being worked on. Whether or not it will be released in the expansion or whether or not it will actually be released in just simply a later patch remains to be seen. But it will be an area hopefully very rich in lore, bearing in mind that Mount Hyal is of course the place of the World Tree and the final battle in Warcraft 3. Now, Northrend. Blindingly obvious. We all know about Northrend. We also all know about Illidan. Although... From what I heard, Illidan was supposedly going off to the Outlands through the Dark Portal, which I assume we will also see. The Dark Portal is blatantly something that needs to be a major content area, and I think it will be. It's already there. The law's there. It's uh, right for plucking. Now, the Maelstrom, the Layer of Aspect, the Emerald Dream. The, we already know the Emerald Dream is also going to come along because people have actually been in it in respect of, again, using these explorer-type programs to go around. Now, these areas, yeah, probably the most feasible thing for an expansion. Everyone knows that every expansion for an MMO adds new areas, because some elements of MMOs are, of course, exploration. And it will be nice to be able to go in there and not know exactly what's going to happen. Now, I'm not decrying the use of Thoughtbot on the basis that I've used Thoughtbot and things like Alakazam in the past. They're very handy because sometimes I don't want to be running around trying to find whatever thing I'm supposed to be finding for badly described quest. It's annoying. Now, while I do read the quest storylines and try and get myself immersed in the game rather than simply grinding it, Thoughtbot is a very useful tool. The problem with Thoughtbot is that it removes any degree of mystery left in the game. Let's face it, what mystery is there in the game for anyone that has access to the internet and football? The answer is very little. The only real mystery left at the moment is... Perhaps... The legendary items that we don't know how to get yet. Perhaps some of the items in Blackwing Lair. How to kill Nefarian properly without exploiting him. And of course some of the items that Nefarian will drop. And some of the Zulgarub hasn't stuff hasn't quite been discovered yet. Unfortunately, that's the only mystery left. And an expansion would be an ideal way to add mystery back into the game and make it an interesting thing to explore. And exploration is an element of MMOs. So, he goes on. This guy obviously had a lot of time in his hands. Whether he actually stole this or he made it up himself, I don't know. But he certainly had a lot of time in his hands. Now, Lost areas. Random maze-like instances outdoors generated every time you, de you are declared as lost. Oh dear. That reminds me of an old mud I used to play where there were areas where you could get completely and totally lost and it was amazingly frustrating. I never did like mazes. I was never a big fan of them and I can't say that I think adding that kind of thing to the game would be a good idea. However, randomly generated instances would be nice. 
Now, can you honestly say, if you are a high-end player, indeed maybe a low-end player who's done Wailing Caverns, Shadow Fang Keep and all that a little bit too much, that you don't know what's going to happen? Generally speaking, you know exactly what is going to happen. That's the whole nature of the game. These instances have been explored so heavily, and you know for a fact where everything's going to spawn. If I go into Stratum, for instance, one of my personal favourites, I know the first pull I'm going to do on Scarlet side will be a group of non-elite skeletons. I can AoE them to death myself if I so wish. The next pull, if I choose, is either going to be two ghouls, on the right, or perhaps a group with three elites and some non-elites in it. I don't know exactly what is going to happen, I know what the mobs do, blah blah blah, and there's no degree of randomness in it, because everything is preset. Now, some of you may argue that's got to be done, because otherwise you get pulls which are totally impossible, but whether or not a random element, for instance, the way Molten Core is done, Molten Core has some random generation in it. You will notice sometimes that if you go in, the first pull will be two lava giants, molten giants, sorry. And sometimes on the left there will be another set of molten giants. Sometimes, however, there won't be. There may be more fire lords, for instance. Now, that is a degree of randomness which is doable. You can cope with that kind of thing. And to be honest, I would like to see every single instance have that degree of randomness in it. To maybe spice things up a little bit. It would be nicer go into an instance and not see the same mobs over and over and over again and know exactly how to do each pull. I would like to explore, I would like to learn in that respect. I don't know about you, but that is what I would like to see. Now, this goes on and on and on and on. Existing areas will be expanded. Yep, that's blindingly obvious. You know for a fact new quests are going to be added in this expansion whenever it does come out. And of course, from BlizzCon we will be reporting first on this particular issue. And he goes on and on and on. The world has been expanded, blah, 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 yeah. Now, this is sort of your standard expansion material. It's what you are expecting from an expansion. I, hope, I think what people aren't expecting are things like skill level increases. Say, the maximum grindable skill going up to 500, the maximum level going up to 100. I personally don't want to see that, because I put the effort in to get to top level. Now, as far as I'm concerned, trade skill has now become relatively irrelevant. All you need to get your trade skill to 300 is a lot of cash. There is no competition to get to 300, because almost everyone's there already. It seems to me to be relatively pointless to add yet another thing which distinguishes people who play a lot from people who perhaps play less. Casuals and hardcores, or power gamers, whatever you want to call them. It does seem a tad pointless, and I would hope that Blizzard knows this, and that they don't add things like this into the expansion. I personally am not a fan of grinding that kind of thing. I don't know about you lot, but I don't like it. I'm already trade skill 300. If you're going to add new recipes, just make them more difficult to obtain. Grinding is relatively pointless. It... I don't see why anyone would actually want to do it. So, I would hope that that kind of thing doesn't happen, to be honest. Now... Inevitably, you're going to see things increases in particular items. They're going to be, there's going to be a pass on existing items. Because in an expansion, when you release a large amount of new content, you will have to alter the existing content in order to balance up. Otherwise, weapons will become redundant, as we have seen with professions. For instance, the Flawless Arcanite Rifle, no one in their right mind would actually build it. It's too expensive in comparison to weapons which are as good, if not better, and are attainable cheaper or free. Now, I'm hoping a pass in an expansion pack would actually fix that. But we never know. We don't know. But then again, speculation. It's the way to go. Okay. It's time for a feature. This show has a few features on it. And from time to time, we play those features. And it's an excuse for me to go downstairs and get a drink and perhaps sit around doing next to nothing, watching you lot wonder what the hell I was thinking when I actually created this feature. Now one of these is an Agony Ant section, for those who haven't tuned in previously. Now we tried to find an Agony Ant, but we couldn't. Well, that's not entirely true. We did. Unfortunately, the Murloc came along and ate her. So putting the word Agony firmly back into Ant, it is the Murloc. It is Ask the Murloc. Enjoy. 
Dear Murloc, I am a level 12 hunter, and I want to know why mages are so good. Arcane Missiles is an awesome spell, and they can teleport. I can't do anything better. What's up with that? They're terror foolish mortals, but as I, the Murloc, haha, <laughs> come to ransack your village and steal all your pickles. Haha, <laughs> yes, the almighty level 12 hunter who can match his awesome intellect or his unstoppable power. Sounds to me like someone left your brain as a child, you snivelling peasant. <laughs> oh no, it's the arcane missiles, it is the end of civilization. Why are you asking me what the problem is when well, it's blindingly obvious that your pathetically inept fensuck doobery with the intellect of a possum and the skills to match? Learn how to play your class, noob, and stop wasting the Murloc's precious time. Ha <laughs> ha! Ask the Murloc. <laughs> Dear Murloc, this may sound very stupid, but I was wondering how to become an elite player. When I go around Iron Forge, I see loads of level 60 elites. Can you tell me how to become an elite? What the places are you talking about when you say may sound very stupid? Of course it sounds very stupid. It sounds like the incessant twaddle of a silly little noob with the IQ of a house brick. Ha! I shall humor your ignorance this time. The Murloc is merciful. Yes, elites are harder versions of normal NPCs, non-player characters. Uh, you do not want to wish mess with them. No, 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 no. Not on your own, anyway. Generally speaking, of course, since the Murloc and WTF pwned five minutes at once. And as such, you will need a group. Of course, you don't have any friends to help you, and you never will. Ha <laughs> ha! Ask the Murloc. Dear Murloc, where is the instance? What the devil? Where is the instance? I'm the Murloc, not a bloody road sign, you fetid peon. For the love of God and all things holy, people seem to be getting dumber by the minute. <laughs> Why is the Murloc condemned to answering the questions of blackguards and fools? In fact, what am I doing in this goddamn wretched show in the first place? The Murloc wants his own show away from that gourd bellied cod piece home biscuit and his silly features. I shall plot his demise in a cunning fashion so that he will never suspect. And then, uh, slash, slash, stab, stab, the end of that foolish pretender. Oh, yes, but sorry, oh, yes, uh, where were my manners? The, the instance uh, is on the internet. Yes, on the internet. Now go away, you worms, the Murloc has some plotting to do. Ha-ha! <laughs> Ask the Murloc. <laughs>